This is the 11th of October and what we've got here, as you can see, there are still some flowers flowering in the polytunnel that it needs a prop to prop them up, to tie them up. The peach have lost their peaches and the only thing that is also flowering are the marigolds. I was told if you have marigolds inside your polytunnel it will stop the aphids coming. Um, some people believe it and some don't. So I've been watering with tomorite and what I thought was a small uh, tomato actually works out to be bull heart tomatoes. So we've got bull heart tomatoes as you can see I've started watering again with the tomorite and the new shoots are healthy and if we actually have a look they're actually even flowering. So the tomato carries on flowering until it gets hit by the frost. We've had cold nights so the there's another tomato. Um, actually this stem was bent back on itself and it had lots of fruit on it and I thought it's such a shame to uh, simply cut it so I just left it and yes some slugs as you can see in the back have gone for the tomato and have been enjoying this bullheart tomato. I've put down some slug pellets so this one seems to be still okay not being damaged. Oh it has at the back it has by the slugs. Um, so we've had a crop of the tomato of the tomatoes actually was on the ground even though the stem was bent back on itself. The plant managed to fruit and provide us with tomatoes. The soil's a little bit dry as you can see. Um, I've not been regularly watering them. So I've come back and we've got some more very small uh, bullheart tomatoes. And on the other side we've got these unusual uh, tomatoes. They're very tiny tomatoes but full of taste. And they seem to grow without feed just on sand and alongside it I've got the uh, bean, the runner bean that I left just out of interest and curiosity in the polytunnel over winter without doing very much to it and it was just a single stem about three centimeters tall and it with the warmth grew and it's enjoyed the polytunnel. Um, here we're going you can see likewise just watering with tomorite and the plant produces fruit. And we can see some more tomatoes. I assume these are the tiny ones again. Um, they carry on flowering and fruiting until the, wind, the frost hits the plant. And if we can see a little bit further, you can see another plant here. Uh, there's the tomatoes on the plant itself and if we go to my uh, cucumbers there's a cucumber mist I didn't actually manage to uh, pick in time because there's so many and it's gone to seed it's on the ground but slugs tend not to eat it, Rat, uh, mice don't likewise and that's a good question to ask your child. Yes, some of the uh, cucumbers hang from the, the stems high up above the ground. Um, but then there are those on the ground as well. And you can see there's another uh, tomato, uh, cucumber that's gone to seed. Skin is no longer green, it's turned yellow. It's quite a generous size, that one. So if I just pick it up with my hand, 
to give you some idea. Oh, it's got stuck. It's got stuck under the nail that holds there. That's why it's a squashed uh, cucumber. You can see it's gone white. Um, so we'll try and ease it out. And the reason that we'll have to cut it out, I think. Uh, the reason why mice don't eat it and slugs don't eat it is because it concentrates salt. So, as like that other one, is a good size. Likewise, I just lift this one up. There you can see a good size cucumber on the undersurface. Got a little bit of mottling, but otherwise nothing. I've left these over winter in the polytunnel and they've gone to mush basically and next year the seeds are already exposed on the ground and they germinate. Little when polytunnel gets warm enough here we have our little friendly toad in the polytunnel as we can see. And of course as invariably is the case, we have the food source for the toad, which is the slug. So that's what is in the polytunnel at the moment. And the way the cucumber protects itself is by concentrating sodium chloride. So should the slug try to eat it, the water is drawn out of the slug gets dehydrated, it feels unwell and it leaves the cucumber alone and it seeds protected. Similarly the very salty concentration is unpleasant for the mouse and the mouse leaves it alone. So I'll leave you with another close-up photograph of a resident toad in the polytunnel. I was just wondering whether I could encourage him to go and devour our slugs over there. Um, but I'll have to make a comment at the end of this film, little video for you to let you know whether the, I actually managed to get the toad to devour the slug. Thank you for watching.